Hi, this is Katrina Sargent, owner and creator of Devil Doll Custom Creations. Today we're going to be doing a honeybee tumbler with peekaboos and crackle. This is for epoxy or crystal lac users. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. I will have everything linked in the description below, including a few of my beginners playlist. Also, this is part of my honeybee mystery box playlist for my tumbler mystery boxes. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a 20 ounce skinny, a wine tumbler, and a wine bottle holder to keep your wine cold. I'll have it linked in the description. I got it from Amazon, but my foam arm doesn't fit correctly in it. So all I am doing is taking some shelf liner, rolling it onto my foam arm, and then once I'm happy with the thickness, I am just taping it with some electrical tape. This is just so it's level on my turner, so I don't have to worry about it falling off my turner. You can do this with footballs also. This shelf liner is wonderful. I use it on a lot of different arm attachments. So I am just taping up the bottom a little bit just so it doesn't fold up and make it uneven when it goes into that wine holder. As you can see, I have prepped and painted my tumblers this metallic gold after I sanded. I'm using Crystal X glitter glue and a makeup brush I got at Dollar Tree. I'm using Glitter Chimps Honeycomb Mixology Glitter. So I have my Honey Bee Pin Mix. It is the honeycomb from Glitter Chimp plus some gold holographic fine glitter from Mr. Nola's. I'll have it linked. This just helps fill in any empty space and the bottoms. When you're putting on your glitter glue or Mod Podge, whatever glue you're using to attach your glitter, sometimes these metallic paints kind of expel your glue. So to solve that is if you spray your tumblers with a clear spray paint before this step and let it fully dry, sometimes that helps that process. So I am just adding some glitter glue, making sure there's not massive streaks in it and then glittering it right away. I am not adding my chunky glitters to the very bottom. I will use my fine mix, or if I'm not doing a peekaboo at all on the bottom, I won't even glitter the bottom because it won't be seen. So why waste the glitter and your time? So I take my tumbler and I roll it in parchment paper or wax paper while the glue is still wet. I am not rubbing across the surface, but I'm patting down. This will kind of help the glitters to lay flat. So you won't have to do so many coats of bright tone or epoxy later. So I am now filling in any spots that the glitter fell off of with that fine mix. With this peekaboo, it's kind of nice. You don't have to have 100% full coverage because you can kind of pick and choose the best honeycomb sections that you want your peekaboo to show. So I kind of avoid the places that have bare areas when I am doing my stencil. So I am using Bright Tone. If you're using epoxy, you can skip this step, but it's still recommended also. I am taking E6000 pump spray and I'm spraying it over the entire tumbler after my glitter glue has dried. Then I'm gonna set this off to the side to dry 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna what's called smush my glitter with wax paper. I'm gonna be doing this step over and over again for at least three times. This helps to not have to do as many coats of bright tone over your glitter and your glitter won't shift. Your glitter is already sealed in. It is a huge game changer when I started doing this. 
So you're just gonna roll it in parchment paper or wax paper, exactly how you did when the glitter glue was wet. I use the same piece of parchment paper over and over again. I don't get a new piece each time I do this. And then spray again, let it dry another 10, 15 minutes, or longer if you're like me and you walk away from your desk for long periods of time. <laughs> and then just roll it again in that parchment paper. Do this roughly two or three times. You could do it more. I wouldn't do less than two times though, or you'll be doing more bright tone to cover the glitter. Like I said, if you're doing epoxy, you don't have to do this step. I would recommend spraying over your chunky glitters with clear spray paint because sometimes chunky glitters expel the epoxy. If you're doing Crystalac, you can do the clear spray paint as well instead of this E6000. However, you're gonna have to let your spray paint degas for 48 hours before you move on to Bright Tone. This is why this pump spray is so great for using it with Crystalac. There's a few options though. If you have the time and you don't have E6000, you can do clear spray paint. You can do Mod Podge. Just make sure everything is dry and everything is degassed 48 hours. So I am using Bright Tone Glossy. I am tending to go kind of heavier handed this first coat and then I go lighter each additional coat. The, if you go too thick, it sometimes can cause waves and it can decolor any white glitter or white spray paint like later. So this is the only time I'm going this heavy, but I'm just putting a little bit on, letting the turner turn it in my hand and let it flow through my fingers. If you're using epoxy, your first coat is gonna be thickest. So what I normally do over raw glitter is I would take, this is a 20 ounce skinny, so I would do 20 milliliters of epoxy. So that'd be 10 A, 10 B. While those turn, I'm gonna move on to the stencil and then the cut gold vinyl. If you have an image that is not an SVG, this is how you do it on a silhouette. You're going to wanna to select the entire thing and then trace. This will create an SVG cut line from that image. If you have a Cricut, I'm sorry, I'm a Silhouette user. I can't help much. So I'm gonna make two different sizes. The yellow stencil is for the larger and the brown is for my wine glass. I'm going to then ungroup them and I'm now gonna work on my honeycomb. That's just the outline. So how I do that is I take one honeycomb and then do the offset at a very small percentage. Make sure you select the squared corners. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the internal offset. And then once you have both of those, you're going to then center them and then make a compound path. This will create the cut line, so it's just the border, not a solid cut like you did for the stencil or the solid gold honeycomb. I'm changing the color so you can kind of see them overlapping. So you have a little bit of play when you're adding the outline cuts over a honeycomb peekaboo, which is the brown honeycomb in this image. The green is the border. So you have a little bit of leeway, so your laying your vinyl doesn't have to be 100% perfect. I always cut way more than I even need, but I tend to mess things up quite often, so I'd rather have more cut than have to recut things again. So now I'm gonna move on to the large honeycomb. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm sorry I left it as a yellow outline. I will change it here in a second so you can see how it overlaps the larger honeycomb the same way as the smaller honeycomb. If you take that outside border and send it back, you will be able to see exactly how much leeway you have between the two so you won't see any borders when you add it onto your tumbler. 
Moving on to the water slide images. I purchased this Be Kind and these honeybees off of Etsy. I'll link them. So I don't like to waste any space on water slide paper. So I have now created multiple sizes for the different tumblers I'm using and plenty of bees in multiple sizes. This will just kind of give you a nice variation on your tumbler. I will link my favorite water slide paper I get on Amazon. I've been doing this for six years. I have not found any paper that I love more than this clear water slide paper. I won't use anything else. When I am printing, I select either glossy paper or label and make sure it's on photo before you print. Now we have everything printed out or cut out. We have our water slides for later, our two gold vinyl, which is for later, and our stencil, which I cut out in scrap vinyl. Everything else besides the stencil to the side, you won't need them for a little bit. So I have cut out the orange is for my wine glass and the green is for my larger. I just didn't like the feel of how big those honeycombs were on my wine glass, but they work perfectly for tumbler or this wine holder. Make sure you sand really good. This is a peekaboo, so it can show if it's not smooth, but the crackle kind of hides it. But it's nice to have a nice smooth surface for your stencil to adhere and not have any bleed under from the spray paint stage, which is next. So I prefer contact paper as my transfer sheet. The reason why I love this is because you can add the contact paper backing back onto your vinyl on the wax side and it won't stick to it and you have a little bit more control of where your vinyl goes. This wine glass, since it has that curve, is a little bit more challenging than a straight tumbler would be. So I tend to hand place my vinyl on that curved surface. This is just the peekaboo stencil. So you wanna leave enough space available for your gold honeycomb as well as your decal and that border honeycomb I pick the prettiest parts of my glitter to put this vinyl on. So my pretty glitter or places that are not bare will be visible. I forgot to say, honeycomb has to have the point facing up. Don't have that straight side. Natural honeycomb always forms in this way. Just a small thing to keep in mind as you're working on honeycomb tumblers. Since this is a peekaboo, I always do my rims down further than I would naturally do. So you don't see any of that gold edge when you're sanding back down through your crackle. Once you have all of your stencil on that you want, you're going to then spray paint the entire tumbler black spray paint, allow it to dry, and then we'll move on to the crackle. So my crackle, I use Elmer's glue and acrylic white paint. I use a chip brush and that same makeup brush I added the glitter with. You can see the honeycomb through the paint, but I like to scratch off a little bit on the honeycomb so you can see that bright color even through some of the crackle. This will just might help you not miss a piece of vinyl. So what I'm gonna do is I have my glue first with that makeup brush. I'm gonna slather it on the thicker of the glue you have, the bigger cracks you'll get. Really thin glue will give you these really fine dainty cracks. I like the thick cracks. However, don't be too heavy handed because you can do too much and your paint will slide. Play around with it, see exactly which style you like best. Don't forget the bottoms and don't let anything be too globby around that bottom edge or that top lip. Once you have it completely coated, while it's still wet, move directly onto your acrylic paint. 
This is where I do a chip brush because it gives a little bit more texture and weathered look to it. You're gonna dunk it in, make sure your brush has plenty of paint on it, and then you're gonna try to do one smooth motion down your tumbler. Add some more paint and do it again. You don't wanna add too much paint on it because you don't wanna have to go over the same strokes more than twice. I did go over a couple places on my bottom because I had way too much paint on my brush on the bottom part. It just will remove some of your glue. You won't get as many cracks, but I will not go over it more than twice. Make sure you get your bottom nice I am impatient, so I use a heat gun. You can use a hair dryer. If you're using a heat gun, you do not want your heat gun to sit in one spot too long because it can bubble up your acrylic paint. But you wanna add heat very fast on it if you're being impatient. If you are not impatient, you can set this off to the side for probably five hours or so and you'll get that crackle still. So if you are impatient and you use your heat gun and you've formed a bubble, if you use your finger and kind of tap it down, it will fold back down. Like I said, take your time though. If it's possible, it's better to do it right the first time than to try to fix something. So this is why I like the chip brush adding my paints. It kind of gives a little bit more weathered look and everything is not 100% the exact same, plus the cracks. I'm gonna set these off to the side and they're gonna dry fully overnight before you try to remove your stencils. In person, you can see these stencils a lot better than in this video. But I take my weeding tool and I'm gonna try to get off that very tip part of the honeycomb and then use my fingers to kind of wiggle it down. If you kind of add a little pressure on the side that you're working on, not pull straight, you can kind of get a crisper line. You can accidentally peel up some of this crackle. The acrylic paint that's over the top of these stencils. So if you have a bunch of paint in that place, I suggest taking a sharp craft knife and running it along that stencil edge instead of just pulling straight. If you do make a mistake, you can add that gold border we cut out also to kind of hide that mistake a little bit. But you wanna take your time on this. You don't want to have to hide a bunch of mistakes. You work so hard to get to this step already. Now you need to do your rims. You need to have a little stainless steel visible between your design and the very top of the tumbler. So the epoxy or bright tone attached to the stainless steel and not the top where a lid goes. The reason why I do layers between this step and the applying the vinyl is because metallic gold vinyl shows everything. 
you don't want to see those cracks or those ridges from the acrylic paint. So you wanna make sure it's nice and smooth before you move on to the vinyl stage. And then once you're at the vinyl stage, you're gonna to wanna to leave your decal space open and you're gonna be adding two different types of gold honeycomb. This first is the exact same size as the stencil honeycomb. You just cut it out in gold metallic final. It's easy to line up so you have a nice placement for your honeycomb. You can just line it up for the row underneath it. The ones we created with the border is a little bit more tricky since you don't have it the exact spacing as this original cut is. But I'm just randomly placing the solid gold vinyl honeycomb in different places. It's just to give it a little bit something different to look at. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing with the outline honeycomb. Randomly place them, place them over some peekaboos, place them in their own spot, have some fun. It does not have to be perfect. These wine glasses with that curve are a little harder. So I tend to take a piece off the transfer sheet with a pair of tweezers and hand place them in those areas to try to get it to look as straight as possible or don't put anything at all on that curve. You will see it if it looks different than the rest of the honeycomb. If you happen to have a piece of vinyl hanging over that top lip, just take a craft knife and cut away that edge. You're going to want to cut away a little bit deeper so you see even a little white crackle and the stainless steel. This will just make sure it is completely sealed under your bright tone or epoxy. So fingerprints are common when you're using metallic finals. So if you take a little bit of rubbing alcohol to wipe away any fingerprints and then take a dry rag and go over it again, this will remove any fingerprints. I also do CC DIY quick coat on top of all metallic finals. This just helps my bright tone or epoxy to not expel from those areas. Once those are cured, you can move on to your clear water slide. You need a container of lukewarm water and you need your water slide paper. Cut closely around your images. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's clear. I use these cotton gloves I got on Amazon, but you can use a coffee filter or some kind of lint-free rag. You never want to release a water slide paper before it's ready. So it will slide off of the backing when it is released. The warmer your water is, the faster it will be, but you don't want hot water. It will disintegrate your inks. So I keep the backing on as long as possible and then slowly remove the backing once it's on my tumbler. And I take that glove or coffee filter and go from like the middle 
out to the edges once I'm happy with where it's placed. You'll want to remove any water or air that could be caught between the tumbler and that water slide paper. You're going to do the same thing for bees. Randomly place them in different locations, different angles. If you have anything you want to hide, like say you have a piece of bare spot where you did that peekaboo you didn't catch, put a bee over that. It will kind of hide that little mistake you did. Since I'm using Crystalac, I need to be careful and remove any extra water that gets anywhere on the tumbler because it's a water-based sealant. It can mess up my previous coats. With epoxy, you don't have to be so, so careful, but it's still nice to remove any extra water off your tumbler as you're working. If you fill any rough areas or lumps or bumps after you've done at least two coats of Bright Tone or one coat of epoxy, you're gonna to wanna to sand it with fine grit sandpaper. Don't do this prior because you can remove some of your water slide. Sand it down every other coat until you have a glass-like finish. If you keep adding coats and you see a streaks in your bright tone, keep adding coats. That will go away, I promise you. You can add a coat every four hours. I do thin, thin coats though. So the thinner the coat is, the less chance that your white is gonna turn yellow. I hope everyone liked this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. Please like, share, subscribe. It means the world to me. And if you have any questions or comments, please write them in the comments. I do write back. And thank you everyone for your continued support.